Namaste, I'm Shivani. Welcome one more time to my YouTube channel, Sanskrit Mantas. Today we're taking a little break just for this week and we're not learning a new mantra. This is a video dedicated to frequently asked questions. It's a Q&A. I've been getting the same questions over and over and over again in my channel and I thought it was about time for me to address them and when somebody else uh, asked me the same question again I will refer them to this video and, and then it will be very informative because um, I'll be responding to a lot of things that people normally want to know so the first thing is that is if you are new to Sanskrit mantras this is a good place to start but you will have to start from the beginning because if you're new to Sanskrit mantras and you dive in my channel with the latest videos you're gonna get lost but that's why I started step by step uh, the first thing I'm going to recommend is that you go and watch the first video in this channel I am going to place the link on the description box where I explain what are Sanskrit mantras, why are they so interesting, and how can they change your lives, how do they operate in, um, in the, on the body, in the physical and subtle body, and a lot more. I also have my blog, the description is always in the, in the, the link, I mean it's in the description box of all my videos. And if you go to my blog, the first thing you're going to see is the home page where it has every single blog that that I've uploaded every single week where it shows the YouTube uh, video but then next to where it says home there's a whole line of different tabs and that's where I have a lot of information the first tab next to home is concepts in this tab I explain what are Sanskrit mantras um, in detail um, then if you go to my place to my to the next tab that is malas malas are rosary it explains to you where, how they are it explains to you why do we do 108 repetitions which is one of the frequently asked questions explain i explain there how to hold a mala how to clear energetically and uh, I'm going to give a little sample. Normally when I am um, chanting in this channel, I use a lotus seed mala. This is the lotus seeds are the seeds related to Lakshmi. And, and Venus is the goddess of also abundance just as Lakshmi. So they are related. So I enhance it with Swarovski crystal because the clear crystal I mean actually the diamond but I'm, I don't make diamond malas. Um, the, cr the clear crystal are related to Venus and um, so I think this is a very um, a very powerful abundance, ma abundance manifesting mala and although it's a little bit big to carry on to wear and, and it's only half a mala with 54 beads I love the size of the beads for chanting. So this is my go-to mala for this channel. Then I want to show you a few more that I have here. This is a crystal mala, but this is a very special crystal. It's called Nirvana Iced Ice Quartz. In this particular mala, the spacers are the colors of the chakras. And then I have a little pendant, which is a lotus flower. Um, it's all also on, on my website, shaktimalas.com, link in the description box. Then I have precious stones. The precious stones, I don't have them priced because every time I go and buy them, they have a different price and normally a higher one. So I request on my page that if you would like, I can give you a quote because then, then when I get a, quote, uh, a request for a quote, I need to go out and price it. This is blue sapphire, believe it or not. These are blue sapphire stones. It's a beautiful model with 108 beads. And I finished it with a 
Lotus Flower Ohm Pendant. Uh, it is a mala, for, a mala for the planet Saturn. It's, it's a very powerful. You can read all the um, benefits of each stone in my uh, in my page shaktimalas.com. This is emerald. These are emerald beads. They are nuggets. They are very natural. They're very organic i i don't know was guided to make this one with a clasp instead of a um pendant so it doesn't have a pendant uh it's let me see i'm not sure if this is 108 or it's only 54. it is 108 and it's long but i like wearing it and i can double it up just to wear it uh, I mean, emerald is my stone of preference because my planetary ruler is Mercury, so it corresponds to the um, emerald. This is a red ruby mala. These are actual rubies, if I ever get to show it to you. They're not, you know, like the high-end quality, but they are natural rubies. And this, these are small. They're actually like five, five and a half millimeters. And I put a Swarovski Fuchsia pendant and some spacers. I can get this to be quiet. Um, also in Swarovski to enhance it. Because what the crystal does is enhances the qualities of the stone. And then I have many more on the website. I'm going to show you a couple more examples. This is a turquoise, African turquoise. You know, normally the, the turquoise that you get in malas, that is um, man-made, halite, dyed, teal, or turquoise. They're not natural. These are more natural. They're the African turquoise. And I put a little... Um, glass pendant it's like a murano glass blown glass pendant which i thought it would go nice with it uh, these are my personal malas and then the last one that i want to share is one of my favorite ones because this mala is purple fluoride and i built it in you know combining the colors in a way that they uh, are in a hue or uh, and then I also put um, elephants as spacer beads, little elephants. So I like this chant to Ganesha, and a little pendant with crystals and with another purple fluoride. And you know, the purple fluoride is very good for channeling, so it's very appropriate for this for me to wear it. Um, you know, sorry about the, I have a lot of instability today with my camera. Um, okay, so that was the next page, uh, titled Malas. The page practice, I highly recommend that every single person following this channel would please read it. It tells you how to chant mantras, how to chant them if you don't own a mala bead. Mala beads are the purpose are to help you uh, count and I give you a few hints for counting without a mala and I also explain and talk about the different forms of chanting Sanskrit mantra which is out loud, whispering, in silence or in writing uh, and the names in Sanskrit for that. Then I explain what a mantra discipline or sadhana is um in how many days you should chant because that's all also another frequently asked question uh, about what i've already mentioned in the blog in the pages of the blog um that is one of the frequent questions frequently asked questions how many times do i chant the mantra in how many days that is all in that page on my blog titled practice um, also people ask me can I chant out loud do I have to chant out loud can I chant mentally the answer is in the same page um, another question is if I can chant 
the same mantra for more than one intention? And the answer is yes. You can chant, for instance, Om Gam Ganapataya Namaha, which is the mantra, the basic mantra for Ganesha, the removal of obstacles. If you want the obstacles to abundance to be removed, and at the same time you want the uh, obstacles to love to be removed, so you can state always people ask me how it's the most simple way I, it's so simple i sometimes don't even know how to explain it how do i set my intention very my intentions very simple you think about them you write in the piece of paper this is what i want to accomplish my sankalpa my intention chanting this mantra for 21 days for 40 days whatever you choose i want to remove obstacles to abundance i want to remove obstacles to a loving relationship uh, and I want to remove obstacles to obtaining optimum, optimum health so this is what I want to chant and you chant that mantra 108 times you don't have to chant it three times one for each purpose you have to state your purpose your intention um, when you're chanting or before you start chanting what I normally recommend is that you write in a piece of paper and Either forget about it and let that subconscious intention be there present or you can read it every single time you start chanting oh this is another ma mala that i love this is my moonstone mala that i forgot to show then um another question can i chant more than one mantra a day yes you can chant as many mantras as you wish and as many mantras as you have time to chant my advice is my recommendation is do not overwhelm yourself with too many mantras because then you set yourself up with a very high demanding discipline and you fail it it's better to start slowly and then increase the the amount of mantras or the length of the mantras that you're going to chant then um, another question is can I chant for someone else definitely yes you don't need somebody else's permission if you're chanting on their behalf like I want my friend X to have abundance I want my boyfriend to have good health I want my mother to be happy you can chant now if you want to do something manipulative of course you shouldn't be chanting for other person but that's a whole different story that I'm going to address a little later because I've been getting a lot of questions and a in a particular topic about that. Then um, another frequently asked question is: Does my poor pronunciation affect or diminish the effect of the mantra? The answer is no. Um, we do our best. I'm not a Sanskrit scholar. I wasn't born in India and I pronounce as best as I can. I know I have my flaws and I don't know everything perfectly, but I do make the effort to pronounce it, pronounce it as best as I can. So when you do that effort, you're giving it your all, you're giving it your best. That's all you need. Whether the result is the best mantra pronunciation in the world or the worst, it doesn't really matter. Um, of course, if you're doing it in a sloppy way, it is going to ma matter. But if you give it your best, you are going to obtain those results because the best thing you can put into chanting a ma mantra is your best effort and your best intentions. And that's what's going to set the tone for what's going to happen with these results that you want. Uh, another frequently asked question. Do I have to actually chant the mantra or will it be effective if I just listen to you? No, it won't. You have to put in the work. There's only so much I can do for you. I can do for you is go through the pronunciation slowly and get you going with that pronunciation and then even chant it, chant it counting 108 times. You can go with me but you have to chant it. You have to chant it. It's not going to have an effect just by listening to it. It's wonderful if you keep your house and your workplace and your car 
filled with mantras and you don't have it doesn't have to just be japa which is the repetition that i do there's a lot of um kirtan walas out there and mantra singers and, and bhajan singers that do a wonderful job i can give a few examples donna delori krishna das jay utal um i don't know there's so many so many that you can if you do nothing but listen to that all day and play that all day it is going to have you a, a good effect in your life it's going to lift your spirit it's going to operate in your subtle body somehow but if you want a mantra for a specific result you have to chant it you have to chant it sometimes i get i get people oh please shivani chant for me i mean I am very happy every single mantra that I chant for this channel I dedicate to all of you but you have to do your work there's a lot of, there, there's been not a lot but a few people that come and start contacting me um, and in a personal or private message and then ask me a question is there a mantra for this and I tell them yes uh, it's in a video on my channel titled X Oh, can you send me the link well I have to take time to go and look for it why don't you do that and, and I don't mean to be mean it's just that when you're not putting the effort and you are expecting everything to fall in your lap you're not gonna get results not with mantras not with anything in your life so I mean I, I'll be the little tough t teacher in this situation and tell you go do your job I already gave a lot you know I do this videos I record them I edit them I publish them to the best of my knowledge and I'm not a you know technologically advanced person and I don't have all this knowledge um, but I do the best that I can with what I have and I'm doing a lot already I am answering to your questions and I'm giving you a, 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 a guidance on how to find it and you still want me to do the job um that's not going to happen because i'm not going to be helping you if i do that i i will help you much more by telling you no go do your job because that's what's going to help you at the end of the day then um about that people also ask me i'm not seeing any result how long does it take to get a result there's not a, a straight answer for that i'm not going to tell you that if you chant one month or 108 times for 40 days is gonna is gonna render the effects in the results that you want i don't know that sometimes i start a discipline with an intention and it comes through the next day i still honor my 40 days sometimes there's 40 days and nothing happens there's 80 there's 120 as many as i want to do and it, it, it keeps not happening so when that is the case my recommendation is for instance if you are chanting for abundance and you do a 40 day discipline and the abundance didn't come and then you chant another 40 days and another 40 days and it keeps not coming what i recommend is for you to take a look at yourself and see what you are doing to prevent that from happening we have so many patterns that sabotage ourselves especially when it comes to abundance so um, what you can do when a mantra is not getting rendering any results please chant a mantra to illuminate yourself your your intellect like the Gayatri mantra so that you can understand what is it that is that you are doing it's within your own own attitude that is preventing you from getting these results then chant another mantra to remove the obstacles for that to happen which is the Om Gam Ganapataya Namaha and then uh, another thing that is extremely important when you start chanting mantra for a specific purpose as a discipline is to set your intention the, those intentions need to be really clear in your heart and you have to have that desire and that emotion putting in for them to happen I really 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 want this to happen and I know I can do it and this mantra is just going to help me unblock that that's what's going to count your devotion your faith your intention if you just say okay om shri mahalakshmi namaha zala mantra forget prosperity and you go om shri mahalakshmi namaha om shri mahalakshmi namaha and 
you're not even you're watching TV or you're doing it, you're not paying attention, you're not gonna get any results. <laughs> so and then oh Shivani, this is not rendering any results. So I'm just saying take a look in the mirror and see what you're not doing properly to you know the reason why you're not getting these results. Uh, other people ask me frequently or they don't ask me they comment that they get all these physical uh, effects like oh, yawning when you start chanting or you your eyes itch or your throat something happens physically well don't forget like I said in my first video and on my in my blog that the Sanskrit sounds have an immediate effect in your subtle body which is part of your physical body and and it can those sounds can can resonate with a specific area and and, and for instance i used to get ticks like uh right above my my eyebrow and it started like doo -doo 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 when i was chanting um all that goes away uh, i've seen people like they start doing this when they're chanting um, and it's very common it's not I haven't seen it once I've seen it many times so it's very common people get sleepy just persist just persist and keep doing it and you'll get the hang of it um, then uh, I also wanted to say that I added recently two new pages to the blog so after the one about practice I have the deities which I explain the main deities that I dedicate this channel to and what they are and what their mantras are and then I, I started um, I uploaded a new page called the chakras where it explains to you what the chakra system in the body is and represents and watch each one of the chakras um, all their qualities and at the end I present um, a diagram with all of them and how they are located in our body and the next uh, new page is the nine planets I do the same with the nine planets I explain about the um, the power of the nine planets in the Vedic system remember the Vedas are the scriptures more ancient like the first scriptures known to mankind are the Vedas so the Vedas had a full companion in astrology and they designate nine planets and some of them are actually not planets because the moon is not a planet and then there's the moon and the north node of the moon and the south node of the moon no, neither one of those are planets the sun is not a planet it's a star the moon is a satellite so uh, but then there's actually only um, six of them there are planets and there are the other pla people ask me what about Uranus what about Pluto they're not considered by the Vedic system for some reason so I'm teaching the Sanskrit mantras that come from the Vedas to me it only makes sense to consider Vedic astrology when it comes to these uh, chantings into this channel um, it, I have a very good friend and I have announced them in many of my videos she's Jill Jardine she's a wonderful astrologist she's been a, a Western astrology since she was 15 years of age and she's my age or a year younger and um, she has the virtue of knowing some, having some knowledge in Vedic astrology and a lot of knowledge in Western uh, uh, astrology and she is also a mantra teacher. she was my first mantra teacher that introduced me to our teacher Namadeva Acharya so I'm very grateful to her so she integrates the mantras with the Vedic astrology and the Western astrology so I highly recommend you get a reading from her they're not I mean they're gonna cost you money but it's worth every single penny okay so another question that I think this is unfortunately the question that I get more frequently and I say unfortunately because sometimes people have the tendency of just want it wanting things to be, be or go their way when they are not and this is as follows um, I have a couple of videos that I published there are going to um, there are Ganesha mantras that I taught and there are mantras to attract a person towards you there's two of them 
I think one is one on Vijaya Ganapataya Namaha, the other one is on Varada Ganapataya Namaha. The way these mantras were intended was were to attract whomever is fit, whomever you need, and who, whomever is going to also want to be attracted to you. And people want to use this to manipulate this. And they keep asking, why I like this boy, why can't I chant as much to get him? My answer is very simple. You, if you chant a mantra to get a boy to like you, a boy that doesn't like you, or a woman that doesn't like you, you are interfering with their free um, right to decide from them, for themselves. And this is going to bring karmic consequences. So the all answer always is no. And then people, I tell them no, the video says already no, and they keep asking. But just this one in my case, I think it applies. No, it doesn't. If you are chanting to get anything specific from a specific person, you are interfering in their freedom and it's not going to render good results. It can even attract them to you, but it's gonna be forced and you're not gonna be happy about it. So I'm not even responding to the question anymore because I already have in the video and I'm doing this now. Every time I get that, that question, I will refer the person to watch this video. Please do not chant asking for a specific person to do something that they are not willing to do. Even if you think is if it, even if you think it is in their best interest. We're human beings, we have the liberty of choosing whatever is good for us or whatever we think and feel it is, and we don't have the right to dictate what is good for somebody else. Um, so that's um that's that question that i wanted to also address uh okay so after that page of the nine planets i have the ceremonies people ask me about pujas what are pujas pujas is like a mass it's honoring a deity uh is the vedic ceremony and i am a pujari which means that i perform the pujas Pujas are not learned overnight. You have to learn a whole hymn of many stanzas called Purusha Suktam to be able to perform a puja in our tradition, the, the style that um, Sadhguru Sankeshava has taught us uh, through the lineage. So you have to buy the material, you have to start practicing, watch the videos, and it's you're not going to become a pujari overnight the exams are hard you have to prove that you know how to do it to get the certification and um but what i will teach at some point it's not going to be immediate probably in the next two three four months i will have the the time and the availability to do this i want to start teaching small um honoring systems to each one of the deities they're called arti arti not only in the sense of, in the sense of light but it's a small like a mini puja that you can do every single morning it will take you five to ten minutes uh, to your ishta devata which is your uh, chosen deity and i will teach those at a certain point in this channel but i'm telling you that it's not going to be it'll probably be more towards the end of this year and then the last page is about me where i give a little bio of myself where i learn the mantras where i was born my journey throughout life and then i found finally found home when I found Sanskrit mantras and then I tell about who are my teachers I give you even give you links to their websites and what's the lineage that I follow uh, and that's set for my blog now there is um, yeah another question was that I frequently get is what is the best way to honor or to thank a specific 
deity? Do I have to have an altar? So here's the thing. We only can work with what we have. If you have a big house that you can have a meditation room, more power to you. That will be really great. I don't have a, a, a not yet. I probably will be getting a whole meditation room soon, but as of now, I don't. Uh, you have to have a little space where there's in a little corner of a room that has to be <clears throat> quiet, <coughs> excuse me, so that you can uh, chant. You can have the images if you want or statues of your favorite deities and place them there. You can lit a candle, you can lit an incense stick uh, or burn some sage, whatever you need to feel that space purified and consider that your little sa sacred pray place and you can honor, you can put flowers. So um, that's what you can do. But this art thing that I'm gonna teach you, this little form of worship, that is a daily thing. You can do that very easily. And it's also a form of honoring your deity. Then um, I've been receiving some people that tell me, I want to teach this mantra that they got on YouTube or in, I don't know, out of Google or the internet. And a lot of the times I don't teach them and I'm not going to because there are from a different tradition that I, what I teach. I was trained to teach Vedic mantras, Sanskrit mantras, uh, the, the mantras that come from the, scripture, the scriptures. They are from a Hindu religion origin. And those are the mantras that I teach. And then somebody tells me, I want to teach Om Mani Padme Hum. That's a Buddhist, Buddhist mantra. I have nothing against it. It's a beautiful mantra. It's not part of my tradition or why don't you teach sadnam whatever no that's a sikh mantra you need to find someone that is uh, knowledgeable uh, i have very little knowledge I, I love the the sikh mantras i really like them and sometimes i chant them but i don't feel like i am qualified to teach them because i don't have that education that study that knowledge uh, so that's why sometimes you ask me or you see a random mantra that I have no idea where it came from and asked me to teach it and that's not what I'm going to do because what I'm doing is, and, and I mentioned this many times it is very important that your knowledge comes from a lineage that you know where it's coming from that it doesn't come randomly from any charlatan that you see um, on the internet that you know that the person that is transmitting that knowledge got it from a reliable source and then they did uh, from a teacher that got it from another teacher from another guru and that's a lineage and that's what I teach so that's why I normally don't um, don't honor those requests and I'm sorry um, but that's the reason why uh, if you want to learn about my lineage and my gurus it's in the page about me of my blog then I strongly suggest and request that you please take a good look at my channel. I go through the work of placing every single mantra that I upload on a playlist. And on occasion it can fail because I don't know why if I save the mantra, I mean the video with a playlist already in place and I publish because sometimes what I do is I record 10 videos, I edit them and then upload them, all of them at the same time. And then I publish one by one every week. And when I edit them and upload them, I save them to a certain playlist. But when I go to publish them, that playlist is not there anymore. So I have to put it again. And sometimes, you know, on occasion I've forgotten to do that twice and they end up not being on that. Like recently, I had to review my Planetary Mantras playlist because there were planets that weren't there. So now I have, I believe I do. And, and you know, if you see anything that, oh, your mantra, whatever for Ganesha is not in your Ganesha play, uh, play playlist, let me know. That really helps. And I appreciate those, um, you guys pinpointing 
what's missing another thing that a lot of people have noticed sometimes i'm chanting and it goes over 180 or go, falls a little short that is very common because when you chant you fall into a certain trance uh, some sort of trance and you're you're moving the beats one by one with your fingers but it can fail you know we're, we're only humans i used to notice that in my teacher and even you know all of my teachers and that's normal that only means that i'm very very connected at the moment and i'm not even here or anywhere near when i'm chanting so it's very normal that i would chant 110 times or 106 so that's the reason why now um so before you ask me oh do you have a mantra to get pregnant take a look at the playlist take a look at the channel or try to browse like shivani ma sanskrit mantras pregnancy something of the sort you will find the mantra and then you don't have to ask me not that i mind that you ask me but uh, for me, it's very difficult. I mean, I already have an overwhelming amount of comments and I like to respond to each one of them. And then if in each comment I have to browse my own channel and, and send a link, then I'm not going to be able to respond to everyone. I'd rather just tell them, you know, uh, I think it's that because I don't have all the titles by heart in my mind. And sorry about this flimsy thing with the camera. Uh, and then... Um, I will tell you it's a it's a video title mantra to remove obstacles to abundance look it up in my channel it's going to be in the abundance playlist and please go and do a little bit of work and get it i know i've been i've been i started this channel uh, this channel in may of 2015 so it's been over two years and there's over 180 mantras almost 190 and it's you can get lost in there but that's why i try to organize it organize them by playlists and then now you can google the the mantra that you would like but i would recommend if you want to find mine just put shivani ma and then the num the name of the mantra that you want to find um and uh, another question that i get frequently asked is what is that sound uh playing in the background when you chant that is an in, uh, an indian instrument musical instrument called tampura a tampura is a um it's like a little guitar like a, it's a string instrument with three i don't know how many strings it has it's very little and it, it makes this really sound wah, wah. <laughs> and, and and then there's the tempura machines that the indians have that is a little device that they turn on and it makes all these sounds and you can regulate the frequency and the tones so uh the scales so i normally chant in g because that's the one that goes best with my tone of voice i sometimes do a but you can either get the recordings of each note in a tempura you can get them probably on amazon or or all they're all over the internet so just get them and play the one and you know play around with them and see which ones resonate better with your own voice and with your own uh, musical tone and then use the one that uh, is best for you i use g normally um so that i think this is all that i have for now i'll put a couple of links in the description box as to my first video my blog is already there jill jardine the astrologer whatever i can figure out that is useful for you guys i'll put it in the description box of this video and i am going to put a link to this video on every single one of my videos from now on so that you can um, when you have a question you just go to this video so that's our, all for today it's been like well, a little bit over half an hour is up and so i'm not going to chant anything today i'm just gonna uh you know keep it just 
for questions and, and answers. And if you have other questions that you want to leave in a comment on this videos, and, and if you have enough questions that I feel it justifies, I will make a part two of frequently asked questions. I will be happy to. One more thing I remembered. Uh, a lot of people keep asking me for the translation of certain words or, in, or or how to write them. I'm not in Sanskrit. I'm not a Sanskrit scholar. I am not the right person to translate Sanskrit for you or to write it. And how do I write my name in Sanskrit? I have no idea. I really don't know. So I'm sorry I can't help with that. Uh, that's another thing that I wanted you guys to know that I cannot um, read Sanskrit fluently. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to read the, the symbols and I don't know the translation of every single word. I, word. I have a really good idea by the meaning of the mantra and the, the transliteration and translation from, from especially the ones from Sankeshava, which used to be the best. Uh, but I don't know the answer to all of those translations. And if you want to really know what a word means in Sanskrit, you need to look for a Sanskrit dictionary, which I don't even have one. But anyways, um, what I do with this channel, I do with a lot of love. Uh, I really love the fact and I really appreciate that you guys follow my channel. I love the fact that these mantras help you and I hope that they continue helping you throughout your journey. I love every single one of you. I thank every single one of you. I wish you the best and a very happy journey. So be it. Tatastu. Namaste.